we are here in Stellenbosch at the University of Stellenbosch's Sports Science Department, where we're conducting a research study on some elite canyon runners, trying to figure out a little bit more about what makes this population so exceptionally good at long distance running. So we've got some novel equipment that no one's ever used, certainly in this group. And so we're measuring biomechanics, oxygen levels to the brain, oxygen levels in the body, muscle activation, oxygen consumption, and we're putting them through a couple of tests. One is a 5k time trial, one is a rear to max test where we make the guy exercise faster, faster, faster until he fails, and then the other one is a fatiguing interval session. So we want to we measure what happens when these athletes fail, we want to measure what happens when they don't, and we want to be able to compare that to other athletes because we think the answers to why the Kenyans are so good are somewhere in this data. People want an easy answer to this question about why the Kenyans are so good and so you would read books about saying it's all culture. You know, in the 1960s they won their first medal, 1964 I think it was. Subsequently the Kalenjin population, which is a tribe in Kenya, has won as many medals sometimes as the rest of the world combined. It's an extraordinary level of dominance. And so people say it's culture, people will say it's the economic incentive, people say it's the altitude that they're born at, the diet, it's all these things, you see. So it's difficult to say there's one thing. Our thinking now at the moment is there's definitely some physiology. Like when you look at these athletes, there's definitely something different. But it's probably not something unique to Kenya. So we can talk about amazing running economy. We can talk about their incredible body types, you know, long skinny legs, no calf muscles. But that's an advantage for running because they've got these exceptionally long tendons, which are springs that harness energy and convert it into forward movement. So if we find, for example, that the Kenyan athletes, these elite runners, have got some characteristic, let's call it A, that makes them world class, now we need to say, can we identify A in other people? Can we train B to become A in other people? And then that's where the whole field opens up to be able to explore. But you won't know what the training interventions and how to identify talent until you know what the limit is. And this is how you test the limit.